Hello, yes, that's right, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. And this is a Hobie 16, and this is a Hobie 16 jib. And we're gonna look at absolutely everything you could possibly need to know about the Hobie Cat 16 jib system. Let's get stuck in. So we're gonna start off by looking at the jib halyard system, and then follow on from that with looking at the jib sheet system. The easiest way to go through this is actually going to be to put the jib up. So we're going to put the jib up. Starting off, we always want to start off by attaching the tack of the jib. We know which corner is the tack because it's got next to it the Sailmaker's logo. And it's got the wire part in the front. And what we're going to do is for a standard European Hobie 16, we're going to attach this to the third hole from the bottom of the chain plate. Okay, we can then unroll the jib and we're then going to need the jib halyard. The halyard is a rope that pulls the sail up. So for the jib, jib halyard, same thing for the main sail, main halyard. If you've got a spinnaker, you'll have a spinnaker halyard and so on. What we've got on the Hobie 16s, which are the standard Hobie 16s from Hobie Cat Europe, is we've got a three to one purchase system on the jib halyard. So this has to be a very strong block like this one, which is the standard one, because it's gonna take the weight of the whole rig. So from that three to one that is going up the mast, this is what's called the Aussie style, this then comes down to a block on the mast, which would make that a four to one, then to another block on the mast, and then down to a cleat, and then down to a second cleat for security. Now your boat might just have a horn cleat on the mast here, which looks like this, and that is absolutely fine. There's no need for any more than that. This was just added later to make things a bit easier. So of course, making sure it's not twisted, we can then attach the jib halyard to the top of the jib. And then on the jib, we've got one hank, which just clips on, which clips on to the forestay wire like this. And we're then ready to hoist. With the Hobie 16, all of the tension of the rig goes on to the jib halyard. So the jib takes all of the tension of the rig. So as I pull the tension on, just look and see what happens to the angle of the mast. As I pull that on, there we go, the mast is going forwards. And then for how much tension, in light winds, we want to put on almost as much tension as we can. And then for heavier winds, we're just gonna ease it off by about that much. So we're gonna use a technique called sweating the halyard, where we pull the halyard from the mast and we pull that outwards. And then we'll pull the rope through the cleat. So then that's holding that tension. If you're using the single cleat um, on the mast, on the older boats, then we'll do the same thing, but we'll just pull the rope through that single cleat. So how much is as much as possible? It is as much as possible, but just making sure that the mast can still freely rotate like that. And then if the wind is getting a little bit strong, we are going to ease it off a little bit so what we would do is just take it out of the cleat and then if you see where my hand is that is the full range of from maximum to minimum jib halyard tension so again for pulling it on sweating the halyard and then just pulling that through and then once we've got it in the cleat here we'll tie it off on this cleat as well if you've got this cleat of course 
Okay, so we can now look at the jib sheet system. For this, I'm just gonna use another boat because it'll be a bit easier to see. And we're just gonna take a look at the general route of the jib sheet. So firstly, and most importantly, we need a purchase on the jib sheet. So it's gonna come from the front beam, whether you've got a plastic traveler, maybe you've got a metal traveler, maybe you haven't got a traveler at all, but it's gonna to have to start from here, then go to a block, and then back to whatever fitting you have here, and then that's gonna go then to the cleat. The fitting that you have may, if you've got an older boat, be more similar to this, but it's the same principle. We, we anchor the rope here, we go forwards to the jib, and then back through the block and to the cleat. And then from there, it's just gonna go across to the other side and do exactly the same thing over there. So it's a continuous system. So middle hole, one down if it's windy and you can disregard the other holes. This is so that we're getting an even tension in the bottom of the sail and in the leech of the sail. And then it's a good idea to tighten that bad boy up with some pliers or a shackle key just to make sure that it's not going to shake loose. Of course, when we're putting that on, make sure you haven't got any twists in your jib sheets. Now, if you are lucky enough to have jib travellers, what we're doing with these bad boys is pretty much exactly the same as the mainsail traveller. So these should be mirroring what you're doing with the mainsail traveller, but always as a percentage a bit further out. So in light winds, we'll have the traveller on the inside as far in as it will go on the upwind course. And then on the downwind course, we're gonna pull the traveller line so that it goes all the way to the outside. The other time that we'd use the traveller as well as point of sail, so upwind, in, downwind, out, is if it's starting to get windy and we want to depower, then perhaps if you're double trapezing, we'll have that bad boy halfway out. And if we're really looking to take as much power off the boat as possible, we'll take that all the way to the outside. So it doesn't have to be particularly windy before we're sailing upwind with the jib traveller all the way out. That's gonna make a big difference to the power on the boat. Here's a quick note about the battens in the jib. Do check out the video that I did make on the topic of battens generally, where we'll go into a bit more detail but the battens in the jib should be as tight as possible. Do make sure that you're using quite a stiff batten because if you're using a really soft batten, uh, it's gonna put way too much curve into the sail. Now on these modern jibs, we've got a Velcro system at the leech of the sail, so we don't actually have any batten sticking out. If you do have the older system on your battens, and you have to tie them in, you're gonna have battens sticking out. Just make sure that that is as short as it possibly can be uh, to avoid it catching on the mast and the jib halyard. Okay, and then finally, something that's well worth doing, uh, whether you're the helm or the crew on the boat, is when you're on the beach, perhaps just practice uncleating the jib because it does take a certain technique which is usually to have the jib sheet reasonably slack and then you flick it to get it out if you're holding the jib sheet tight and you're trying to get it out it's not going to come out so it needs to be a little bit slack so that the jib sheet is touching the trampoline and then that makes it easy to flick it out of the cleat so it is well worth practicing that until that becomes second nature. 
Okay, so there we go. I hope that was helpful. I hope that really explains everything you need to know about the Hobie 16 jib system. Of course, if I did miss anything, put it in the comments and perhaps we'll review that in the Q&A on Friday. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with some more on Joyrider TV.